Aquatic plants are the perfect addition to many aquariums, but if you've just picked up a new plant, you may want to consider how to introduce it to the tank. Different aquarium plants have different growth needs, and using the correct planting technique can make all the difference in setting that plant up for success. This guide will show step-by-step -step our recommended ways for planting each type of live plant in an aquarium. Number one, rhizome plants. The most popular types of rhizome plants include Anubias, Java Fern, Bulbitis, and Bucephalandra. They all have a rhizome, which is like a thick horizontal stem or trunk. All the leaves and stems grow upwards out of the rhizome, while the roots grow downwards. The great thing about rhizome plants is that you don't need any substrate to grow them. You can wedge them between cracks and rocks or mount them to decor using super glue gel or sewing thread. Eventually, the plant's roots will grow and wrap around the hardscape so that it becomes difficult to remove. An even easier way to plant your rhizome plant is to leave it in the plastic basket and rock wool and drop the pot into an easy planter decoration. Finally, if you would like to plant your Anubias or Java fern in the substrate, you can bury the roots as long as the rhizome is not covered. Rhizome plants absorb nutrients primarily from the water column, so feed them an all-in-one liquid fertilizer as needed. Number two, sword plants. Swords are classified as a rosette plant, which means all the leaves grow out of the base of the plant in a circular pattern. Examples include the Amazon sword and red flame sword. Use your fingers to dig a hole in the substrate and bury the roots of the sword, or you can use tweezers to push the plant roots into the substrate. Try not to cover the crown or the base of the plant where all the leaves come out. Swords are heavy root feeders, meaning they prefer to absorb nutrients via their roots, so make sure to add lots of root tabs if you're using inert substrate or if your nutrient-rich substrate is depleted. Number three, cryptocorini plants, also known as crypts for short, are another kind of rosette plant that requires substrate and needs root tabs to grow well. Common types include crypt wentii, crypt spiralis, crypt parva, and many other species. Similar to sword plants, you want to bury their roots while keeping the crown of the plant above ground. Crypts are very prone to melting whenever they're introduced to a new aquarium, so don't throw away your crypt if its leaves fall off. Once the plant gets used to its new surroundings, new leaves will soon appear. Number four, grass-like plants. This category refers to Vallisneria, Dwarf Sagittaria, Microsword, and other plants that propagate via runners or little horizontal stems that produce a small plantlet at the end, eventually creating a long chain of connected plants. As with rosette plants, plant the roots into the substrate and don't cover the base of the plant's leaves. Oftentimes, one pot comes with several individual plants, so plant them separately so that there's a little space between each one to grow and multiply. You can also place the plant with its plastic pot inside an easy planter to prevent it from getting uprooted by fish. Depending on the size of your species, these plants can quickly propagate to form a grass-like carpet in the foreground or a tall forest in the background. If you would like to spread the plant into another area or a new tank, simply cut the runner, once the plantlet has its own roots and leaves, and then replant the plant somewhere else. Number five, mosses. Mosses like java moss and Christmas moss are similar to rhizome plants in that they don't require substrate and can be attached to hardscape via thread or glue. In fact, instead of being packaged in pots, they're usually sold already affixed to a mesh rectangle, driftwood, or decor. Moss can also grow as a large, free-floating mass, which is great for colony breeding since baby fish can easily hide from the adults in the dense coverage. Marimo moss balls are technically a type of algae, but like normal mosses, they should be gently placed on the ground, not buried, or attached to hardscape. Number six, stem plants. These plants are known for growing vertically with leaves coming out directly from the stem. Think of Bacopa, Pogo stem installatus, and pearlweed. To prepare the plant, remove the basket, ring, or rubber band wrapped around the base of the stems. Plant each stem deeply, at least two to three inches into the ground, which means the substrate may cover some of the bottom leaves. Don't plant the stem plants all in a single bunch, but rather individually with a little space in between so that the roots have enough room to grow. Use tweezers to easily plant them, and if needed, wrap plant weights around the bottom to prevent them from floating away. If the stems have no roots, some people will float them at the surface until they develop roots and then plant them into the substrate. Number seven, bulb plants. 
the banana plant, dwarf aquarium lily, tiger lotus, and aponogetans are all types of plants that grow from a bulb or tubers. Rinse the bulb or tubers to remove any rock wool or loose substrate covering it, and place it on top of the substrate. If the bulb starts floating, you can either wait for it to sink or place it loosely under a piece of hardscape to keep it weighed down. New leaves and roots should quickly sprout from the bulb, but if there is no growth after one to three weeks, try turning the bulb over because it may be upside down. Bulb plants can grow very tall with leaves that reach the water surface, and they tend to take nutrients from both root tabs and liquid fertilizers. Number eight, carpeting plants. There are many kinds of foreground plants and even mosses that can be used to cover the ground in your aquarium. But this section is specifically referring to short, dense carpeting plants with lots of tiny leaves and small roots. Examples include Monte Carlo and Dwarf Baby Tears. Most websites recommend breaking up a pot of carpeting plants into very small pieces and planting them around the aquarium with hopes they'll spread. But we often find that the roots are too small or delicate and the plant bits end up floating away. Instead, you can try inserting the whole pot into the substrate and allowing the plant to carpet out from there. The basket and rock wool will keep the carpeting plant from floating away and give it a good base to root from. Once the carpeting plant becomes well established, you can go back and cut out the potted portion. Carpeting plants typically enjoy lots of light, pressurized carbon dioxide, and both liquid fertilizers and root tabs. Number nine, floating plants. Don't forget the easiest plant to add to an aquarium, floating plants. Familiar varieties include frogbit, dwarf water lettuce, duckweed, and even certain species of stem plants like water sprite. Simply place them on the water surface, provide lots of light and liquid fertilizers, slow down the current, and don't let their leaves get too wet. Some people like to use fishing line or airline tubing to contain the floating plants and prevent them from getting pushed underwater by the filter output. Our final tip is to make sure they don't cover the entire surface of the water or else you may have issues with oxygen depletion for the fish and lack of light for other plants down below. We hope you enjoyed this video. To watch another one just like it, click here.